Hey pilots, this is Pete with BananaHobby.com. Welcome to your box and build review. For today's episode, we are going to review the Freewing Stinger 64 Sport Jet. Before we start opening the box here, I haven't opened this exact box yet, but I have had the privilege of assembling one of these and actually flying it at the flying field for our photo purposes. So this box here, we will build it from the box on up and uh, take it out to the field and give you a flight review as well. Before we go into this, let me just talk a little bit briefly about the Stinger Jet. This comes in at uh, 700 millimeters, which is 27.9 uh, inches in wingspan, basically. It is a 64 millimeter EDF unit, so which, is, which means the uh, EDF diameter, which is the electric ducted fan. The fan is actually a 64 millimeter, which is a very, very common size on the market. This is a pre-painted EPO foam construction airframe, and uh, it is available in the red scheme and in the blue scheme as well. The motor is a 4300 kV brushless outrunner, and uh, there's pretty much no landing gears involved in this. I don't know, I'm not sure if they give you the option of including it or installing it, but we'll find out when we open the box. This is pretty much going to be on your standard four channel. So there's no crazy mixing or anything like that. It flies on your aileron, your elevator, rudder, and then your throttle. And the battery of choice gives you the, uh, the recommended battery is a three cell 11.1 volt 1600 milliamp pack. And I have successfully flown this airplane on the 600, 1600 mil three cell packs to a 2200 as well. You probably have to CG it a little bit with a 2200 being that it'll be a little bit nose heavy. But uh, everything will work out pretty good with the 1600 to 1800. And uh, keep in mind, you want to stay somewhere upwards of uh, 50C and above for the LiPo rating, just because this is an EDF jet and is a high KV outrunner motor. So you want that uh, additional C rating to be able to provide the power on demand without stressing out your electronics. So let's just talk a little bit about the Stinger and what I think and what I like about it. I'm an airplane fanatic, period. I like flying everything with uh, rotors on it to uh, slope soaring, to dynamic soaring, to jets, to turbines, to 3D, to uh, scale warbirds and uh, bombers. And what I like about this jet is that it is so very simple. The build is so very simple. And then the flight performances is absolutely just something that's off the charts. What I mean by that is there are so many jets on the market now. Um, from all over the world, you could find uh, different various jets of various genres. And uh, with this style here, this pretty much looks a lot, a lot like what's been on the market for a little while called the, the uh, Park Zone makes it, called the Habu. Or I think E-Flight makes it. Or maybe it's Park Zone, I don't remember. But it's called the Habu. And it's a larger jet and has been very, very popular. And uh, this jet pretty much comes along the same lines as far as looks and performance. And what I like about this is this is something that when I was flying turbines or the larger EDF jets, there's companies called E-Bandit. And when we talk about an E-Bandit EDF jet, we're talking upwards of six to $8,000 to get this thing flying. And when you're flying, your knees are chattering the whole time because you have eight grand flying around up there in the air. And I've actually flown some of other people's jets as well in that E-Bandit category. So this, the looks of this and the performance is very similar to an E-Bandit. However, you can have this for, I think, under $100 now, pretty much, uh, using your own transmitter and receiver and uh, battery pack. Don't quote me on that. I'm not too sure, so you have to check our website for the price. But I mean, it's really nice to be able to bring this down to a level to where we can all enjoy it as EDF jet fans. And with that, I think we're just pretty much going to start opening the box. And I'll show you everything that comes out of here. And I'll keep talking uh, throughout this, uh, this box review here. And then we're going to jump right into the build. The reason why I say that this jet is um, so very popular is the fact that we all have you know, a lot of us, if you haven't flown EDF jets, this is something that's probably going to be a little bit different for you. You do need some basic four-channel experience. But this jet has just a ton of room for modifications. All of us want to go fast. I was just at an event at the Western Big Jolt here in um, the West Coast Big Jolt here in California in Chino. And uh, we have a little short teaser video or a short show video up, so please check that out. And there, over there, we have what's called the EDF Jet Speed Challenge. 
Unfortunately, I did not have an EDF jet on hand that was uh, capable of uh, competing with these guys, but I did have my uh, Funjet Ultra that did about 130 miles an hour on a four cell setup. And you know, this is something that's on the market now where you can go to various companies, get a metal, metal fan unit, or get a eight bladed or 10 bladed fan unit, com, you know, match it with the proper power system, and you can get this jet flying well over 150 miles an hour or faster. Uh, my buddy out there, Matthew, uh, Matt Stringer, he actually, we actually gave him one of these, and he is just going super fast with it. And uh, he's got his all set up with the Hacker Systems because he's sponsored by Hacker Motors. And, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing his fly. I think his is still in the progress of getting ready to fly. And then we're going to actually get together and do some fun flying with this. I think you've heard me talk enough here, so let's go ahead and start cutting stuff out of the box. There we go. And uh, this stinger ships to you just like this. So everything's pre-packed. You have your manual coming out, which we will refer to a little bit later once we start the build. What I love about this is the fact that this is a one-piece main wing. Let's talk about this for just a second here. I'm going to go ahead and use my scissors and be careful when you're cutting the tape open because you don't want to cut into the plastic here. Okay? Actually, it's already open. We don't need to cut it, so perfect. All right. This is your one-piece main wing right here. This is ready to go. It is pre-hinged. Decals are pre-mounted. And uh, you have your mounting holes down here. Your servos are pre-mounted. And your control surface horns are pre-mounted as well. A little bit of light adjustments here, and you're pretty much ready to go. Extremely stout EPO foam. When I talk about EPO foam, this is really beefy. And it is uh, braced here with wing spars all the way just about to the wingtip, and they are carbon, and they're rectangular carbon. So it keeps that torsion stability, uh, the torsion strength here. Okay, a pointer and a uh, bit of a tip here. When you get this in the mail, and you choose to make this go really, really fast, and if you plan on doing some really fast high-speed high turns, this is EPO foam, and it is uh, super glue or CA glue foam safe, uh, or safe. You don't have to necessarily use CA glue made for foam. So you can actually use regular super glue. I would put a small tip on, and I would just run a bead of super glue all the way down the line here of this carbon spar. And where you see it go underneath the decal, use a pair of X-Actos and just slit it really quick right there. And then just run that and let it wick into the foam and uh, let it sit there. And do it to the same thing on this side. You could also use a, a little bit thinned out epoxy and then just smear it over the top if you want because we want to make sure that this carbon spar does not come out. And so far, I have not had it come out. But I'm talking, if you're going to make this thing go 150 miles an hour, by all means, just put some CA glue in there. And of course, with CA glue, um, I never know what kind of CA glue y'all have or y'all are using. So make sure that you try it on an inconspicuous spot on this airplane. Make sure that it doesn't eat the foam. And then move forward. Okay, so this is the red version. And talk about limited pieces of parts coming out of here. Uh, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. Okay, Your tail section comes out just like this. Your two tail elevator servos are separate from each other, and they are pre-mounted already, so this is pretty much ready to go. Again, hinged, pre-painted, and this tail section is actually just basically screwed onto the fuselage. So this is ready to go here. We're going to set that aside. And we will pull the vertical stabilizer. Once again, vertical stabilizer ready to go. Servo pre-mounted, pre-glued in with rubber cement. Your wires are running down here. It's also uh, clevised and surface mounted with the control horn already ready to go. And this is also screwed down as far as I can remember. So we'll go into that once we start the build. I'm going to set that aside. And here is the fuselage here. Get that out. OK. Look at that beautiful little fuselage. This is just a good looking little jet. Everything, again, is ready to go. This is a magnetic front canopy. That pops right off with two rare earth magnets, which we will set right back down. OK. And then your EDF unit is down here. And it actually is not glued in right now. It kind of moves around a little bit, which is OK. There is a piece of fiber tape here that is also taping this down. Once you get the bottom of the wing on there, it's actually going to hold it into place. So I see no reason to actually tape this down. Another tip here. Since the EDF unit is loose and it's coming out, go ahead and get a pair of flathead screwdrivers or a flathead screwdriver and make sure the, the blades are tight to the outrunner and check it. Hold the outrunner and tighten it down. Just do it once over on it because this is going to be a high speed, high performance jet. And uh, again, you can see here, 
This is a plastic, plastic nose to keep everything from denting up here. And um, you do have a bottom landing skid plate here for a hard surface or ground or gravel landings. And uh, forgot to mention, your main wings, there are push rod covers on your ailerons to keep the push rods away from clipping the grass or anything like that from stripping on uh, main landings here. So I was correct about something. This is strictly for hand launch. The box actually shows contents for um, a wheel configuration, but it's not included. So let's get that uh, right out of the way real quick because there's nothing else in this box here. So the wheels are not included. And I don't suggest wheels on this at all. I would keep the wheels off of it because it's such a fun park flying sport jet. You just want to go to the park, go to your local field, and fly this, you know, hand launch it, and then uh, just belly land it on the grass. And that's what I've been doing with my previous one. And uh, it's just been working out great. This is your hardware bag. And Free Wing will include a really nice little handy screwdriver set with a magnetic tip. So you do want to keep that around. So in this bag, you have your wing mounting screws, a couple of extra clevises, and your Y harness for your ailerons here. And I believe it's for one of them is for your elevator as well. OK, now we're going to jump right into the build. However, having learned something about this airplane from my buddy Matt and myself, I want to talk quickly about this. This piece here on airplanes we call what's called a turtle deck. And what this is, is once you get your, your uh, vertical stabilizer mounted up here, your wire will be running underneath here in the channel through this little hole up here, which you'll see when the camera actually gets closer. And this piece here is actually glued down into place right here. Both Matt and I have lost this piece on during flight because we didn't glue it down well enough. So make sure you use some uh, quality glue, get this glue down there, and then even maybe put a piece of 3M blender tape right over the top of it or something like that to keep it from falling off. Because if you lose this piece, it'll affect the flight a little bit, but it just kind of doesn't look good. So make sure you make, you make sure that uh, you do glue this piece down really good. This is called the turtle deck, basically, here, this whole piece here. So that's just a little tip there. So this is the entire contents of the 64 millimeter free wing stinger. For today's build, I suggest that because this jet is going to perform at high, such a high rate of speed, even bone stock, I would suggest that you do not use a park flyer size receiver. I would probably, if you're going to use Spectrum, I would use something in the AR6200 or AR600 category that is a full range receiver with a satellite. If you don't use a satellite, Spectrum has the new Spectrum receivers, which they are four channel. I think they're only like $39.99 or something like that. And uh, five channel or six channel, I think six channel full range without the satellite. And uh, make sure you just get a full range because they're so fast. Sometimes you just, they get out of sight so quickly and you don't want to lose that reception with a little Park Flyer 60, you know, like 6100 or 6110 receivers. And uh, for today, we will use my DX8. And for my receiver, I'm probably going to use an AR600 uh, DSMX full range receiver for the build here. So now let's get the camera in. We're not going to mess around with multiple angles on this build. I just want to get this thing built, uh, built for you. You can see the actual hands-on build, and then we're going to get it to the field and give you a flight review of this beautiful little part flying size EDF jet called a Stinger. Now let's go ahead and just go hands-on and start building this Sport Jet 64 Stinger here. I'm going to go ahead and cut the accessory bag here from the top, and we will exit the, all the contents, but not, spl uh, not split it up here. We will use that screwdriver, and included is a piece of Velcro here, and we'll talk about the Velcro a little bit later. It's actually for the battery placement. Okay, we have two Y splitters. One is your short, shorter, and one of them is longer. And for those that do not know what Y splitters are, it basically ties together two servos into one plug that goes into the receiver. For your ailerons, and for in this case here, there are two um, elevator servos. So that's what they're used for. Okay, let's go ahead and set that aside. A couple of tools you want to have on hand is just your basic um, Phillips head screwdriver, which this is included. A uh, hobby knife, if you got one, be careful, they are very sharp. And then just a good working platform and some rubber cement or whatever type of glue you want to use to actually glue this turtle deck on there. And uh, pretty much going to go hands on here. Let's go ahead and open up the manual and we will see what the free wing manual tells us to do for the first step here. Okay, they want us to go ahead and 
install the main wings, which I don't, um, usually sometimes I'll go backwards and install the tail section first just, just to keep it out of the way and call it pretty much, call the tail section done before we start working on the main wing because we don't want, we don't want the main wing to actually flop around. But in this case, this airplane is so very small, we don't really need to do that. So like I said in the beginning, I'm going to actually remove this tape here and I will remove the EDF unit. Move over. Got a different camera angle going here. And we will remove this unit, as you can see. There is one Phillips screwdriver there. So I will go ahead and grab the outrunner motor in the back and keep that from moving. And I'm going to use my flathead screwdriver and just give it a tighten down here. OK, that is pretty tight there. So we're good to go there. We don't need to tighten that anymore. Okay, it was again, it's just a precautionary thing, just a once over, make sure it's all tight. Okay, we will push the fan unit back down into place. And we will use that piece of fiber tape once more and just go ahead and make sure this is nice and flat. There we go. And tape her back down, just like that. Okay. So now they want us to mount the main wing already, so let's go ahead and do that. Get the tail section aside. Okay. We're going to go ahead and extend the wires here for the two aileron servos. Okay. And we're going to grab the short Y splitter now. And we are going to connect the Y harness, the Y splitter, to the aileron servos here. Okay, do not be alarmed that the colors do actually not, they don't line up. Uh, the, your servo wires may be white, red, and black, and then your Y harness may be brown, red, and orange. So um, it doesn't matter. If, it, if your colors come the same way, they line up, then they're fine. If they're not, it's okay. You line up black with the brown color, the red is the center, and then the orange pumping color will be lined up with the white. And that's how we, content, we uh, connect the configuration here. Very simple, we plug in both sides. This point here, I always suggest that if you have any clear tape or electrical tape, go ahead and just wrap that. It just keeps this away from getting pulled just far enough that you can't really tell that the connector's been pulled. And then you lose, you lose control of one side of your ailerons or something like that. Um, I'm not gonna go ahead and do that because I actually don't have any tape with me. But if you do have some with you, I would suggest that you go ahead and do that at this time. All right, let's go ahead and get our main fuselage here. Okay, I'm going to remove the canopy. And if you have um, any kind of an airplane cradle, it always works best right now, but I don't have one with me, so we're gonna go ahead and just do without it. Okay, let me go ahead and take a look here, okay. The speed control is actually on a Velcro in here, so we're gonna pop off the Velcro really quick on the ESC which actually, there we go, okay. I can let that dangle real quick. Okay, right here, you have a channel right here. It's a hole. And I believe that we will, what we will do here is we will run the aileron wire with the Y harness through this channel, both wires. If you have somebody helping you, this would be great. And we will grab it from this side here. We'll get it from the uh, canopy side. So we wanna try to get this to go that way. Okay, I got my hands on it, and we're going to pull on it. And then now we're going to go ahead and just, uh, this portion here, we're going to get those connectors right through there. We're going to tug on it with our hands on this side. And we will make sure that the wires are not pinching by pulling on it some more. There we go. Now it's not. And perfect. We will now just seat that wing, the main wing, right into position here. Okay, we're going to make sure nothing is pinching here, which uh, we are looking good. Okay, they actually, the instructions actually tells us here to remove this tape. It's not needed at all. So let's just go ahead and remove it because it asked us to. I guess it's just there to hold the fan in place during shipment. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just removed that tape. Okay. We're going to go into this bag, and this has your screws in it. They're all self-tapping screws, which means they don't have any fine uh, 
thread there, they all screw into the surface. We're looking for four of the main wing screws, and I would believe that they are these four right here with a spare. So they look like that. They're the longer self-tapping screws, and we're going to go one into each hole here. But we won't do much with it yet. We're just going to just uh, slightly insert them. I will use this, uh, the supplied screwdriver with the larger Phillips head. And I'm going to cradle this airplane with my hand underneath it right here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and test one screw out first. Okay, I can tell you right now that that screw is not correct. Let's see here. Yeah, I think the screw needs to be longer. Let's just check the longer one. Correct. Okay. These longer screws go to the front of the main wing here. There we go. And then the two shorter silver ones go to the rear. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and tighten. Okay, it, it's biting. It's going down into position here. This is all part of building an airplane, so we're doing this together here. Okay, I'm going to tighten the rear section here. And again, I'm not tightening this down all the way. These are plastic washers, and this is EPO foam construction, so we don't want to over-tighten. I'm tightening them down right now just to the point where I feel tension and it is actually grabbing into position. So we're right about there. Right now, I, before I tighten it down all the way, I'm going to make sure that the airplane wing lines up, which it does. And now I will tighten it down. And keep in mind, these are foam washers going into... EPO foam. So I'm only going to tighten this until I feel tension and I can see that it's pulling the washer down into the foam just ever so slightly. And that it's plenty tight enough here. There we go. Okay. Talk about building your sport jet. Your main wing is on there and pretty much almost ready to go here. All right, let's go ahead and uh, talk about our tail section now, which is right here. We are going to now unravel the tail servo wires, just like that. And um, your, here's a tip for you. Grab the wire with your finger on the lower end and use your other finger with some tension and uh, just give it some pressure and pull on it a few times to make these wires nice and straight. The heat generated by your finger and pulling this forward will make it a lot straighter because that wire right there needs to run down this channel down the middle. So we want to keep it as straight and as flat as we can. Okay, we're connecting these to the longer Y splitter in the same configuration color-wise as before. Black to the brown, red to the red, and the yellowish-orange color to the white. And that's pretty much ready to go. This is pretty much ready to route to your front of your fuselage here. Okay, we have an opening up here. Okay, we will now just, uh, I will just sit this here because this is long enough so far. Then I'm going to just start running this to the front and hope I get lucky that it actually goes through to where I can reach it. I'm going to grab it from here. And uh, it actually seems like it's going pretty smooth here. Okay, now I'm going to actually check it from the front and see if we have wire. There it is, right there. Perfect. So I have the wire lead coming from underneath the canopy, and I'm just going to pull on it. Nice and slow. There we go, until it's nice and flush. And I'm going to set down the tail section here just to make sure it fits good. So right now, it fits good. But we're not screwing anything down yet, so make sure you don't screw anything down. We're just making sure that this fits good, which it does. So now what we do is we will now take this off because this length here is okay. 
we're going to leave that alone and we're going to flip the tail section here and we're going to install the vertical stabilizer. I've removed the zip tie from my vertical stabilizer and once again I'm going to just go ahead and grab it and then smoothen out and straighten out this wire the best we can. There we go. Okay. Now what we do here, we will do is we will flip the horizontal stabilizer and we will slide this vertical stabilizer right into place here. And you'll see that the wire will actually come out from the front side of that. So it looks just like that. And now we flip this and we have one wood block down here. This wood block here. Let me go ahead and zoom this in a little bit. Okay, we have one wood block here and one screw holds that vertical stabilizer into position here. And the screw we're looking for looks just like this. It's a short silver self-tapping screw and it has a built-in washer soldered to the front top end of that screw head there. And that's the one we're looking for. And we will test fit this with our hands and it's okay, it's biting. And then now that it's in that position there, we're going to go ahead and tighten her down. And uh, this part here, you want to use two hands and your fingers to hold the vertical stabilizer in position while you're tightening this. Okay, I'm just about there, so now I'm going to make sure positioning is good, which it is. And now I will tighten her all the way down. And this part, you can tighten down just a little bit light, harder than the other one because you have a square piece of plywood you're working with going into the foam. But once you see that it's pulling into the foam already, that's plenty enough. We won't go any farther than that. Okay, there's not much stress going on on the vertical stabilizer there. Okay, just like that, your tail section is done. Okay, remember your wires, we already pulled it earlier, so we, want, we just want to make sure that this, these wires sit down in the channel now, and then you slide the, the vertical stabilizer and the tail section nose down first like this, which we have to pull on the wires a little bit here, get them all out of the way, and then press with the nose down first, and then tuck the back right into position, and it's down. Just like that, your tail section is on. That's it. So your tail section is complete. What we will do now is there are four screws, two on each side of the tail section here, here, and here. And we are using the four remaining cell tapping screws, which are all the same lengths, two on each side. And then we are going to grab our trusty screwdriver here, the one that's included, and we will start tightening. Okay. All the while, you see my hands are sitting in this position here because I can feel the lip right here. If it's a little bit out of position, I can feel that it's out of position and I can actually press it with my hand while I'm tightening it. And when it's getting to the point where it's just about tight, I will kind of let off on it and then just uh, feel that, make sure that it's nice and flush, which it is. So now we go to the back here. There we go. So far we're still not tightening down to until they're absolutely like cinched down tight. We are just actually just um, getting them down into position so that we can actually line it up, which they pretty much line up pretty good all by themselves, but we want to just make sure. There we go. And then we tighten the opposite side down. side there. This supplied screwdriver works really well. I actually carry these in my tool bag. They're a great little screwdriver. Uh, you know, you stick it in your pocket and then when you're heading out to the runway, if you have anything come loose or anything like that, you have a little Phillips screwdriver right there to take care of your little need there. Okay. So this is just about there. Oh, drop the screwdriver. This EPO foam is so strong and so stout. And that's why these things are so fast. We're going to try to get a radar on them for, you, uh, uh, for a stock speed there. Okay, so we're lined up and we're tight. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. And remember, these are plastic hinges, or plastic washers going into foam. And then there are paint uh, above that. And um, when you start tightening them down, once they are there, 
you can visibly see that they're pulling stress cracks or little stress lines into the outsides of the washers and you're plenty tight enough. And once you get there, you know, you're pretty much ready to go. And now we have this single wire here. This is for your rudder. Okay, we're going to run this back through this hole just like we did before. Okay, so I have the rudder servo wire coming out from there. I'm going to pull that one tight, just about tight, and we're ready to go. I'm going to check out the speed control. The speed control I had pulled off of the Velcro earlier. I'm just going to press her right back down on top of the Velcro that's in the middle of the fuselage there. And you're ready to go. Uh, tip here is when you are pulling these lines over, you can actually mark the tips of the servo plugs here with a little sharpie and you'll know which ones are for your ailerons, which ones are for your rudder and for your aileron, I mean for your elevator here. So you're pretty much done here with that portion of the build. I always suggest that uh, these are all screws by the manufacturers on the control horns. It never hurts to grab a screwdriver and then do a once over on these screws and just make sure all of them are tight and you're ready to go. And this is your hand launch slot where you grab it from to actually toss it for hand launches. Okay, we are at the point now where I will use uh, just a rubber contact cement that's included in a lot of our airplane kits. And I'm sure if you have any laying around, or you can use actually Elmer's glue works good. Um, RCZ56 for this purpose works good. But I don't suggest anything super permanent just so that uh, if in the event that you need to replace any servos or anything like that, you can still get this turtle deck off. But even then, you could just still run it straight through just the way that we were, we've been doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a light layer there. But again, I've, I've already experienced losing this and so have my buddy, buddy Matt here. So we want to make sure that uh, we put sufficient amount of glue on there and we're going to press down. And I don't imagine that coming off, actually. Okay, we got a little residual glue. We're just going to go ahead and wipe with our fingers and get the glue off. No big deal. OK, we're going to let that set up, and we're pretty much done here. All right. Now all we have left, pretty much, is installing your receiver and your radio system, and then we're going to look at the control surface throws, and you're complete. And that's how quickly this Stinger 64 actually built and went together. And can you imagine basically half an hour, 45 minutes or less at your workbench, and you're flying an EDF jet. And this thing bone stock, I think it's going to exceed 70, 80 miles an hour probably. Um, out of a dive, I'm not sure. So we'll get some speed readings when we get to the field here. But what a sporty looking jet. Just beautiful here. You got to get that canopy on there to give you the full, the full look of it here. Look at that. Tell me that's not sleek. That is slick. Beefy, solid, ready for flight. Pilots, that is your easy build, build review and box review, build and box basically, of the Stinger Sport 64 made by Freewing. Look at how sleek and beautiful this little EDF jet looks. This is still your full four channel function with EPO foam and just a beautiful looking jet. Look how streamlined it is and you, it just even looks fast just sitting there. That's what I like about some airplanes is that even when they're not flying, they still look good and they look fast. A couple of pointers for you. When you go to set this up, if you opt to get it as a ready to fly from us with the transmitter and receiver, I would suggest that you use all of the farthest away from the control surface horn holes as you can. Not the servo holes, but the control surface. Use the farthest away from the surface as you can to, to minimize the throw. Because the roll rate on this is extremely fast. Um, if you're using your own radio, make sure you dial in some expo. I probably fly about 50% expo on my elevator. About 50% uh, expo on my ailerons, depending on how much they're moving. And about 35% on my rudder for now. And, uh, you know, or maybe I'll start it at 35% expo all the way across, but I will dial in dual rates. Uh, if you're using a DX7 or a Futaba a six channel or something like that, if you have something with triple rates on it, you can dial in triple, dual, triple rates for your, all your control surfaces. Um, again, right now, the standard setup here is a 65C, 1600 milliamp rating, 11.1 .1 volt um, Genesis power under the Pete Signature series. 
And I know that this, ha this airplane can handle much more than that. If you opt to change out the motor and the speed control, you can make it go a lot faster. But we're pretty much ready to go here, ready for the flight review, as you can hear here. That is not lacking in power whatsoever. And again, this is an EDF jet, so we're never ever bench testing our thrust purposes um, with the airplane at a standstill without moving for more than probably three seconds at a time. I will bump it. I have good throttle tone. It's going to full throttle, and I will back right off. I never let it sit there for more than probably about three seconds because you risk the chance of burning out your electronics because there's no cooling going over the electronic surfaces whatsoever. Beautiful Stinger 64 made by Freewing. This is available at Banana Hobby. Please tune in to our flight review. We're going to try to make it a fun flight review and uh, do some high-speed passes and some fun aerobatics with this beautiful little EDF jet. This is something that was unheard of a couple of years back. And now we have something this small in a jet format with an EDF unit. Amazing. My name is Pete. Thank you all always for your support. Please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe here as well. If you have any questions for me, go ahead and post them underneath in the comment box, and uh, we will see you at the flying field.